All right, so we've done some work inside of the Substance Designer to make sure that we could, you know, jump around inside of there. And you can see in a lot of cases, we don't need anything. We can do most of the work that we want straight in Substance Designer. We don't even need ZBrush or anything like that. But, you know, it doesn't mean that ZBrush is obsolete. It doesn't mean you can't use all the work and the skill that you have in ZBrush and bring it into something like Substance Designer. So let's do that real quick today. First thing we want to do is grab a alpha. And I'm going to grab that and it gives me that alpha. I'm going to export it. I'm going to put it right there, alpha. And then I'm going to do uh, the texture thing that we talked about. I'm going to come over to the normal just to get a normal. I'm not sure which one I'll use. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this alpha. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab doc again for this normal here. And I'm going to say export. I'm going to go Z. Normal. And then the last thing I'm going to do is a little bit different, but not completely different of what we've done before. I'm going to turn this back to flat color because we just want two colors, right? And I'm going to do two colors on here, but I want to be very specific about the colors I use. And it'll make sense when we get into to Substance Designer. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick red, blue, or green. Basically, is the three colors we get to choose from. So we're going to go up to green here at first. Get it as green as possible. 100% green. Okay. So we can get that as green as we want. Like that. And then we're going to say fill, because we have the background selected. We're going to say fill object. It's going to be green. And then we're going to go over to the bricks. And we're going to pick this one as, like, let's say blue. Let's get a good, strong blue. That. And we're going to say, again, probably don't even need to fill it at this point, but we might as well fill it. And then what we're going to do is just do a grab again. So texture, and this time we're going to say grab dock, and you see we've got a blue and a green. And maybe red would have been a better choice, so let's do red too, just to be safe. Look up here, grab as red a red as I can get. Oops. And then it doesn't show up because I've filled it, and then the, you know the paint's on there. You go, red and green, pretty opposite. We can see them pretty good, so let's go grab those two. That's probably a better choice. Grab the red and the green, and we're gonna say ID, or I should say Z to be consistent. Underscore ID map. Okay, so then we'll come over to Substance Designer. And once in Substance Designer, we're going to use that stuff we just made and make similar to the same texture we made before in Substance Painter. I just want to show you that you can use it. A lot of people don't like using it. Um, you can get really detailed stuff inside of Substance Designer without it. But sometimes I like to sculpt and, and see if I can get this stuff this way. So I'm going to say New Substance. I'm going to just go ahead and make it a metallic rough, just a standard, just like that. It gives me my standard setup. And then what I first want to do is import those textures that we just exported out. So I'm going to, easiest way to do that is just to open up the folder with them in it, like this, and drag them all in. And this time I'm going to say link resources, say okay. The reason I say link is that way if I change them, they're, they're not embedded in the texture by default. And the, now first I want to show you a couple things. I want to show you really we aren't going to even use this, bit map, this normal map and I'll show you why. But let's start with the height map real quick. The height map, if we look at it, is just like we expect, you know, simple height map um, that we got out of ZBrush. So we're going to come in here and I'm going to say height to normal, bam, throw this up here, throw this into there, get rid of that one, throw it into two, now let's just do it to here, like that. And we get this normal. Now let me show you why we aren't going to use and why people say that the uh, normal map that we're defaulted to inside of ZBrush is backwards. If I just skip this, this height map, let me move these a little bit closer here. If I just skip these height map and I just take this bitmap that we've got our normal from our ZBrush and I throw it in here, you'll see that it's inverted. You see how it's going down even though the light's coming from above and you can tell the light's coming from above? Well, we don't want that. So what we would have to do to make this work correctly is we'd have to right click on it um, or just click on this thing right here, say node. 
and then we'd say invert, and then we'd say invert normal. And there we get this, right? And then if you click on this and drag it over, you'll see it's the same thing almost. It's a little bit different. There's a little bit more shadow and stuff inside of here. So, I mean, you may like what you get when you do it this way, but it's up to you. Um, we're going to go ahead and use most of the stuff out of the this, uh, out of our height map. So we're going to get that out of here. Okay, so we've got our height map. It's built our normal for us. Um, let's go ahead and make our height from that too, which is... Not that one, but this one. So we're going to delete that, drag our height into there, just like, oops, just like that. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to show you the tessellation and the upgrade stuff here. So when we come in here and go to materials and say edit and say definitions, we have this physical metallic roughness and it's set to parallax occlusion. <coughs> we want to say tessellate instead. Okay, and this only works if you have a height map on. If you don't have a height map on, it's not going to work. Um, so we're going to grab this out so we can see a little bit better. I'll pull this all the way in here. So what we have is this uh, this image in this picture is going to be a little bit different if we mess with it now. So let me go ahead and change this also to a 2D or a plain high res. Okay, so you can see what happens. When I click on this again, materials, default, and I can just go to edit now because it's already in the tessellation version. If I use the scale button, you'll see that it actually scales up the geometry. That's what you're seeing when you do see things like material ball. Maybe that's pretty crazy. <laughs> Let's do rounded cylinder sphere two tiles. There you go. That's kind of what you're seeing when you see that. The other thing you can do when you do this is material, default, edit, and we can come over here and see how many tiles we want. And we can tile it up as much as we want. Let's just leave this at, actually, before we get out of here, let's get this back down to one just so we can see a really good high res version of it. And then we'll just change it to the rounded cylinder, which I kind of like and it's common to use. So we'll just use that. We do want to come back in here, default, and edit and change how high we have this. We don't want this this high. I just wanted to show you what you could do. Okay, so if we look at my height map, you can see that it doesn't have a lot of variation. So what I might want to do first is change this so I get some more level control out of this. So I'm going to say add node or again spacebar and then I'm going to say levels like this and then I'm going to mess with it so I can get this to be darker and lighter in areas. That way I get height changes. See how they change in height now? And you notice that when I grabbed that it did split it out to wherever it was going after that. Okay. So that may be a little bit much, but you get the idea. And let's do it like just to give us some variation. And there's other things we could do. Well, we could have fixed it in ZBrush for one. But we'll just leave it like that for now. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is try and get something for, let's see, we could do detail, we could do color. We could do noise passes in here and get the growl to look differently. I'm not really going to try and do that right now. We're just going to get some color into this first. So let's talk about what we're going to use this map for here. This map that we just sent out is red and green like we expect. What we need is a, another node in here that's called RGB and then splitter. That's how we use our maps, our, our channels inside of here. So now we split it, and if we look at it, it splits the RGBA. It's one of the reasons we want to make sure we get this all R or all G. And just in case I didn't show you that as I think back, the way you can make sure that these colors are correct is you come up to color, and then you can see you can just dial them in right there. So all green, no red. All right, so back in here. So now I have that going into here, and then I can just pick two colors. Let's do a gradient. Let's do a gradient. We'll copy paste it so we have two gradients. And then we'll do a blend. Like that. Oops, that was the wrong one. In fact, we'll just do both of these. Like that. Oh, I guess it won't let me do both. So I'm going to say this is the top brick. And this is the bottom brick. And then we'll come over here or the stone and I'll say gradient editor and I'm going to use my magic thing. I have a nice stone picture over here. I'm going to grab it. It looks pretty good. Let's go to there. I'm going to grab this one and do the same thing. Pick a gradient and just do this one. 
Let's say okay and put it there and then I'm going to put it to my non-uniform to my thing. Now by default it's going to be this color, right? So I think I have these switched. There's a trick you can do if you select both of these and you push X, it flips them. So now it's the opposite. So now my bricks are here and my my gradient uh, isn't or my uh, grout's right there. So all I have to do is pick red or green and tell it to be the the opacity. And if I look now I've done it correctly. So red being the brick means it's going to show the gradient color. Actually, I did it backwards. The gradient color, the gradient map is not going to be on top. So I need to go. Um, I did green. Actually, I meant to do red. Red. There we go. So now my bricks are there, and I've got the gradient. I've got my my ID channel all set up right there, and it's good to go. And then we can come in here, and you know, you can go hog wild and put noises and all that stuff on there that you want to do. Okay, so what else? Then you can take, let's do this. Uh, let's take this uniform color. So we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna make, let's do, actually I guess I could have undone that and just copy and pasted it. And we're gonna say our grout is a little bit less shiny than our, our bricks just because they get more wear. I meant maybe backwards, but that's the way we're doing it. So I'm gonna say this is more black and then I'm gonna do a blend node, BL, and there it is, that's actually at the top anyway, and then I'm gonna take this one and go to there, so now I've got the gray, and then I wanna do the grout again, so I'm gonna say green this time and go to there, and you can see the grout is the less shiny and the, and the other one is, so there you go, so I've got that set up. Maybe I want that inverted, so let me try this. X again, there we go. So I want the bricks to be less shiny and the grout to be more, I think that's right. Okay, so then we also have to get our AO out of this. We can just grab this, push our AO ambient, and then we'll come up with this one. You click that button and it goes straight to, we don't want it for the height, but we'll take this out and we'll throw it into there and then take this and delete it. And take this one and go straight into our height. Okay, so now we got ambient occlusion, we've got We've got our height, we've got our our specular control, and probably could have used some noises on this to modify how they look. They're pretty random. And we've got some color and we've got our normal map. And now we've got a tiling texture based off of the normal, uh, of what we made in ZBrush, and it tiles pretty well.